Very lucky on this program to have Leith Van Onselen, Chief Economist at the MB Fund and co-founder of macrobusiness.com.au to join us every Saturday morning with the latest economic observations. There's a couple of things to rip into this week with the great man who's on the line, Leith Van Onselen. Greetings. G'day, Luke. Thanks for having me on again, mate. It's a pleasure, mate. Thank you for being available for us. Australia's monthly... CPI fell 0.33% in January to be 3.4% year on year. Was that a good outcome? Should the treasurer be punching the air? Yeah, look, it look it was a, it was a you know better than expected outcome. Work um, the the markets, economists, and uh, expected inflation to come in at 3.6% year on year. So it came in 0.2% below that. Uh, it's also tracking slightly below the RBA's forecast. So. Look, it's it, it's um, it's definitely a good measure, and it's just another indicator that Australia's inflation is coming down slightly faster than what the Reserve Bank expected. Uh, I don't think it's going to move the needle on you know the interest rate decisions, though. I think you know they're going to stay on hold for a few more meetings yet, uh, based on this data, unless um, you know unless unless the the economic situation turns around, mm. it becomes worse, uh, you know, worsens from here. Yeah. Um, there was obviously, as always, there, there's there are pressure points. Uh, which always bucked the trend. And as has been the case for really the last 18 months to two years, housing inflation continues to be a, a sore point. Um, and it is it is one of the things that's causing our inflation to stay high. So um, Australia's rents, as measured in the CPI, so the CPI measure of rents is basically captures all rents across the market. So that's new rents coming on as well as existing rents. Uh, that rose 0.7% in January, which is about a, point, uh, nine, about a 9% annualised rate. And it's actually accelerated again. Hmm. Um, so uh, that's a bit of a worry. And also we've got uh, this sort of elevated building costs as well, which is it is coming, building cost inflation is coming down, but it's still high, running higher than the inflation rate. And together those two things, so housing makes up about uh, nearly a quarter of the CPI basket. Jeez. So those two things, rents and these, you know, cost of new homes, building costs continues to sort of um, stifle the RBA uh, yeah. in bringing our inflation down quicker. And uh, obviously that's, you know, the, the, the rental side at least has been driven by the federal government's huge immigration program, which I keep alluding to every single week, which is basically, you know, pushing up housing costs and obviously, you know, adding to inflation and making people's lives harder with higher cost of living. Yes. And thank goodness you do mention that every week. We try and mention it as often as we can. This is a direct result of government policy. They had the Jobs and Skills Summit, which turned into be a the festival of Big Australia, and they flung open the doors on the uh, pretense that they were bringing skilled workers in. And what they brought in were uh, university students in order to get uh, the universities cashed up after they were shut down during COVID. And, of course, other people. We've still got skill shortages We've got uh, at least 600,000 more people. And, you know, here's an idea. They have to live somewhere. So yeah, shock the, horror, that. Yeah, shock <laughs> horror. So the clowns in Canberra, without building the large numbers of extra houses, in fact, we're building less or dwellings and infrastructure, um, and infrastructure spot on, thought, let's bring 600,000 in. They won't notice. It's simply big Australia. And as a result of that, supply and demand, the rent goes up. And as Leith told you there, uh, rent and and the and cost of housing, et cetera, make up a little bit more than 20% of the inflation basket. I mean, goodness me. Yeah, and, and we've actually got some more bad news on that front, Luke, if, if you don't mind me saying that. No, uh, please do. So, so, so CoreLogic uh, released their January results. So they, they measure rents differently. So CoreLogic and the other private sector data providers, they, they measure new rents. So whereas the ABS CPI is lagging because it measures all rents, so existing rents as well as new rents. Yeah. And But but basically, you know, the, the new rents in the market is a leading indicator of what's going to happen in the CPI. So CoreLogic released their, their advertised rents series, and that actually went up by 2.4% in the three months of January, which was the worst quarterly result, the highest quarterly result since May 2023. And what actually showed is that rents are now re-accelerating. So they, they went up heaps, then they started to slow a little bit, and now they're going up again. And a uh, you know pretty good economist uh, from Jardin, uh, chief economist called Carlos Cacho, he uh, released a note this week, and he warned that ongoing that basically house, housing inflation is going to remain strong, especially through rents 
for yeah. at least the next two years. Yeah, and he 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 projected that um, that and the annual pace of rents is going to grow between seven and ten percent for the next two years, and that's Good. going to basically stifle you know push up obviously cost of living, but also you know be um, be this positive driver for inflation. And which, what it basically means is that everything else has got to fall quicker to get inflation back to that target band. And again, this is all, you know, a direct consequence of the federal government's huge immigration program. And, and then, you know, we'll get to July and the, the government will say to some people, hey, what about this? We're giving you an extra 15 bucks a week. And if you're one of the one third renting uh, and you might be working and you might, you know, you might earn 50 or 60 or 70 or whatever, and you get an extra 15 or 20 bucks from the government, that goes nowhere near covering the increase of the rent based on these predictions. So yeah. you may as well have done nothing. Yeah, that's right. And, and also, obviously, if you're a mortgage holder as well. So so if you've got rents going up so strongly, that's putting up a pressure on inflation, which then means interest rates have got to stay higher for longer. So it means if you're a mortgage holder, you also get smashed uh, yeah. indirectly. So, yeah. look, at, yeah, it's, it, it's a it's a you know very stupid policy. We, we talk about it every week. Uh, obviously... If you're going to grow the population like a science experiment, well, you've got to make sure that there's infrastructure and housing for those people to live. And our government never does it. They always, uh, you know, like we always laugh at China, who does the build it and they'll come approach. We do the let them come and don't build it approach. <laughs> and uh, the complete opposite. And then we all live with the consequences. So, well, you know, even, even yeah. worse, you've got a federal government saying, come in, come in. And then they end up in the uh, domain of a state who has to build the infrastructure. And they say, uh, hang on, uh, what? You know, that's the uh, that's what we're working with. Yeah. Retail numbers. Tell me about them. Yeah. So uh, you know, it, we, we've got this weird economy at the moment where we've got obviously you know record numbers of people coming in, and uh, that that's obviously boosting overall gross domestic product, which is the you know main measure of economic growth. While the sh- while GDP per capita, so that's per person, continues to shrink. So we've basically had three consecutive quarters of falling per capita GDP growth, which is a per capita recession, and. And next week we get the uh, sorry this week uh, coming up oh, sorry next week <laughs> sorry it's Saturday um, <laughs> next week we get the uh, the December quarter national accounts, and um, and that's lo- that's almost certain to show that this per capita recession is going to go for a fourth consecutive quarter because GDP growth is not going to keep up with population growth. So, um, but just another indicator of this: the Australian Bureau of Statistics reported that retail sales um, grew by 1.1 percent in January. Now that sounds good. But that follows a 2.1% fall in December. And it was actually well below economists' expectations. And what it actually showed was that retail sales of values, so that's before inflation and population growth, only grew by 1.1% in the year to January. And that was basically, as I said, less than what economists were expecting. And what that means is that once you adjust for inflation and you adjust for um, population growth, you know, retail sales uh, likely fell by about 5% um, adjusted for population growth and inflation. So it's just another one of these indicators showing that, yes, overall retail sales over the year have gone up slightly, but once you adjust for, you know, the, these other things like population growth, mm. it's just another sign of this per capita recession we're in where the overall economic pie is growing, but everyone's share of the pie is shrinking, you know, quite drastically. Yeah, And um, this is why... Now, the federal government loves big Australia immigration because it makes the economy look better than it really is, whereas the people on the ground who's actually living in this economy are getting poorer. And that's reflected here in the retail sales are affected in, you know, in per capita GDP and also obviously household incomes, which are also, you know, suffered their biggest fall in history mm. in the last year as well. So, uh, yeah, it's a pretty, you know, depressing situation when you break it down like that. Um, but I guarantee you, Luke, you'll get the Treasurer come out on uh, on Wednesday. I think the December quarter GDP figures come out, and we'll get prob- probably a you know very modest positive growth in the economy. And he'll be champion saying, "Look, you know, Australia's avoided recession again." When really, once you minus our population growth, we're still going backwards for four consecutive wow. quarters. Wow! Wow! Uh, you're a uh, a Melbourne boy. Uh, tell me who wins the Dunkley by election. Do you have any sense about this? Mate, I've got no clue to be honest with you. I, I, to be honest with you, I barely followed it. Uh, it it's you know, I know there's um, it will probably I, I, I suspect it'll be probably I don't know the Labor candidate maybe, but it'll be a left, reduced majority. But I honestly don't know to be honest with you. And uh, yeah, it's just another one of these you know circus side shows that's going on down here. <laughs> um, you know, well, well, you're unfortunately, right. look, 
look, look, look to be quite frank, look, I, I don't see unfor- I don't see the coalition having a chance next federal election. Not because the Albanese government's good, they're terrible, but because I just can't see him winning with Peter Dutton as leader. Um, you know, I just don't think he's electable. He's got too much baggage. He's not popular, which is really sad uh, that that it's that. But I think if they got a good leader, uh, so well, a new leader who didn't have the baggage, who had more charisma, and it wasn't so disliked, I think the coalition could have a chance of stomping it in because this Al- this Albanese government is on the nose. Their primary vote's terrible. They're only, they'll only get in with, you know, preferences from the minor parties, et cetera. Um, and I think the only thing stopping the coalition from, you know, from making this a one-term government is the fact they've got such an unelectable and unpopular leader. So I think that's the that that's kind of my macro view on the politics at the moment. They need to replace Peter Dutton's leader with someone new, someone fresh, someone who doesn't have the, the baggage of the former government and um, isn't seen as, you know, being so negative. Wow. Good on you. Nice to talk about that stuff. We don't uh, we don't get the free wheel um, because of time, but fascinating. Good to chat, mate. Have a great weekend. Yeah, cheers, Luke. Thanks. Thank you, Leith Van Onselen. That's very interesting to me. Very